As with so many African conflicts, the latest fighting in Sudan has brought death and misery to huge numbers of civilians. But this time, even the UN has been shocked by what it called the unprecedented speed of disintegration. Whatever happened to Africa's long-lost promise to silence the guns? Mo Ibrahim seeks answers to such questions. He's a Sudanese-born British billionaire with a foundation that researches Africa's problems and rewards those who try to solve them. Does he ever lose faith in Africa? There are setbacks in some countries. Unfortunately, one of them is my country. But we, we will find a way forward. At the core of Africa's problems, he says, is bad governance. But why is it still so prevalent? How was it that African leaders voted themselves immunity from prosecution for the most serious crimes? And what's behind the refusal of some states to condemn Moscow's invasion of Ukraine? Is it payback for the wrongs of colonial occupiers? Mo Ibrahim, Sir Mo Ibrahim, welcome to Conflict Zone. Thanks, Steve. You've tried for many years to promote better governance in Africa. In some countries, you've had some success, but the violence never seems to go away. In Sudan, the country of your birth, decades of fighting, and now the killing has begun again in earnest. How personal is this conflict to you? It's very personal. Uh, it's terrible and uh, our people deserve better than this. And uh, what we have here is two sides armed to the teeth, uh, fighting a battle in, in our capital. Uh, each side wants power, and with power comes financial resources. It's, it's a terrible story. And this is story of soldiers, uh, military coups is, a century old story, unfortunately. And enough is enough for all those guys. Despite pledges by both sides to respect humanitarian principles, there hasn't been the slightest effort to avoid civilian casualties. Why is that? Uh, they don't care? Uh, absolutely. I don't think they care. Each of them think they can somehow win this. They, they cannot be a winner here. They cannot be a winner. They're only losers. Every side is losing, and the Sudanese people are losing. The little infrastructure we have is being destroyed. And the country really is in a mess. And more civilians are dying than soldiers. It's, it, is, it is very sad. Do you ever lose faith in Africa? No. Despite all this that's going on? Yes, yeah, but that's one country out of 54 countries. According to our index, in the last, over the last 10 years, you know, we produce an index to measure governance in Africa. The majority of two thirds of Africans living in a better governed countries than 10 years ago. So we are moving forward. There are setbacks in some countries. Unfortunately, one of them is my country. But we, we will find a way forward. But this conflict, as you've also said, is taking place against a really dismal tapestry of backsliding democracy, hasn't it? Yes. In a number of states, bad governance. Yes. You've called it Africa's own goal, and you said we are responsible for yes. it. How much of Africa shares your sense of responsibility for this? We, okay, let's define governance. Governance is really about a number of of, of, of deliverables. One of them, of course, is human rights, delivery, uh, participation, etc. Uh, another part is the economy. Then there is the human developments, and there is rule of law and security. And the picture, the, the picture is really mixed here, because over the last 10 years, Africa made a lot of pro progress in the area of infrastructure, and human development, better education, better health. But not in security. General. No. Security and rule of law is going down, actually. Why? Why is there no connection between the two? The, the problem is marginalization of minorities in some countries. Uh, exclusion, uh, create resentment. Uh, then you have also external factors like climate change, where you end up with conflicts between the herders and the farmers. 
And if that's not managed, it ends up into ethnic uh, conflicts, like happened in Darfur. And then you have a, a criminal like General Bashir, then using militias to sort out the problem, they end up in 300,000 people dead. So it is, it is a mismanagement also of natural disasters happening because of climate. That's one element. You, you, you said earlier this year, we started to see coup d'etat, which we thought was something in the past. We started to see this phenomenon of the strong man. It's something we need to fight back against. How do you fight these so-called strong men who are entrenched in their countries across Ar Africa, protected sometimes by foreign powers, often by criminal gangs that kill for the sake of it? How, how do you fight back against these people? I think young, young people, Look at what happened in Khartoum. We had a strong man in Sudan for 30 years, entrenched. General Bashir was entrenched in power for 30 years, created all this military organization around. It's not enough for him to have an army. He created rabid support forces and called them Hemaiti, you know, instead of Hemeti, is, is my protection. And uh, they had the intelligence, the intelligence had an army, his party has a militia. He had all this stuff. They changed the curriculum in the schools. 30 years. Yet the same kids who grew up under his rule, those guys were dying in the street for democracy. Those are the young people who give us hope because they will not accept the soldiers, they will not accept uh, tyranny, they will not accept uh, dictatorships. And they went on the street for three years now. We're going through this in Sudan because the young people would not accept the soldiers. You, you, say, that you say that, you say that, but perhaps one of the more depressing byproducts of conflict and bad governance is that Africans are showing increasing tolerance for the role of military in politics. According to Afrobarometer, a report last month, that view is particularly strong among the young people, 18 to 35 year olds. Afrobarometer reported that over the last decade, opposition to military rule has declined significantly. Now, a slim majority, this, a majority, is willing to accept military intervention if elected officials abuse their power. That has to be dangerous for democracy. It is, it? it is dangerous. And the problem is, you take Guinea, for example, where you have Alpha Conde abusing power, his power, and then trying to play with the constitution suppressed the, 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 the opposition unfairly. And uh, a guy who was a Democrat before getting power, then power gets to his head and up being a dictator. When a military coup came against this guy, you understand why people say, oh, it's wonderful, we got rid of him. So they are not really supporting the military coup. They are happy to get rid of a really corrupt, civilian who really abusing the constitution and abusing his power. If, if they so can that translated, get rid of them. Yeah. If they can get rid of them. But then, but then the problem is you are, you are replacing the Satan with the devil. I mean, that, that is, it doesn't work like that. That's why I, 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 people need to learn that uh, it's not enough to, uh, to seek the fall of a bad leader. It's also important to know what you're going for instead of that. Instead of ending up supporting military coup again is that. So but, many Africans but, though. But Tim, Tim, about about the 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 strong men. Unfortunately this something became fashionable, not only in Africa. Our guys in Africa look around and you see all the string men, strong men all over the place. You know, and, and we had Trump in the United States, we had Turkey, we had Russia, we had China, we had Philippines, we had... How many strong men are there? We see this fashion of strong people is, is coming back again all over the place. And our guy look at this and say, oh, that is wonderful. Why, why I cannot do like... Uh, Oriban, why I cannot be like uh, Erdogan, why I cannot be like... Uh, this is a time for strong men, unfortunately, and we need to wake up to that. It's not an African phenomenon, it is a global phenomenon. 
I'd like to talk back, um, uh, go back to the yeah. violence that's taking place in Sudan at the moment. Um, wanton violence, according to the UN, which said both sides trampling on humanitarian yeah. law. Back in 2010, the New York Times Bureau Chief for East Africa reported on how combat in Africa had morphed from soldier versus soldier to soldier versus civilian. Most of Africa's fighters, he said, weren't rebels with a cause, they were predators. And for them, terror became not just a means, but an end. To what extent is that still the case? It is, it is unfortunately prevalent in some countries of Africa. We have seen like eight, nine coups in the last, in the last few years, unfortunately. We thought we finished and dusted with the coup, you know, there was this era in the 70s, 60s and 70s, where every morning we used to have a coup somewhere in Africa. We thought that is finished. Unfortunately, it's coming back. And something we need to be careful about and stand against. And actually, there is a question. I mean, I know it is strange to say this, but in all honesty, do we need armies in Africa? Why do we need, what is the job of the army? The army is supposed to protect your border. Who, is there any African country threatening another African country? Do you have any wars between African countries? I don't recall any. So why you need the army? So we spend all this money to get those guys tanks and guns and aeroplanes. When I want we to, need to I want feed to our come kids. On, I want to come on to that in, yeah, in, in, I mean, in a moment I, or two. I, 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 I just, I don't think we really need these armies. And those guys who spend all this money in them, and then they come and shoot us in the capital. I mean, what is this? Last week, Sudan's government told the UN Human Rights Council that it was basically none of the UN's business. What was happening inside Sudan was an internal affair, they said. And the Sudanese armed forces, who of course have launched attacks and airstrikes in densely populated civilian areas in the capital, as you said, they were simply doing their constitutional duty. What do you say to a government like that? Does it make you angry? that an army bombing its own people in their capital is just doing its constitutional Tell me, that's duty. That's not a government. That's not, a, that's not legitimate. Who, 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 who calls those guys government? It's the only government they have, isn't it? it? Is, you know, it's people just took it by power, by guns. They are not elected, they are not, they have no, I mean, those guys just, you know, making themselves marshals and generals and... But God why knows aren't what, other African states able, huh? denouncing this? Why aren't other African states denouncing this? The Af African this? Union actually is, is, is suspended Sudan. That's it. Yeah. That's all they've done. What else can they do? What else? The problem is the African Union hasn't got a standing army. For a long time, we said this standing force of the African Union should be financed, should be armed. Then it is able to go and deal with all those criminals and terrorists and whatever. Unfortunately, the African Union has, hasn't got it. It has plenty of good intentions, meant, doesn't it? But yes, it doesn't realize. It's it. only the moral power. What, 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 what happened to silence the guns by what, 2020? Yes, what, what happened, happened to what, that pledge? What about Security Council? Forget about the African Union. What about Security Council? Right. Where is the Security Council? I think a lot of people have forgotten about the Security Council because, because it's, it's defined by the vetoes of the five permanent yeah, it powers. Is, it's paralyzed. But what Tim, the whole public order is in a mess. The whole public, the whole, the whole world, is, you know, all these global structures are a mess. Security Council is impotent, cannot do anything. The African Union, African Union is impotent. African Union is toothless. They don't have the means to, they can only express at least moral rage which the Security Council cannot even express. So we're not seeing much of that, as from where Sudan uh, uh, no, is concerned. In, fa in fairness, we? in Sudan, they did. In fairness, in Sudan, they did. We had a conference two weeks ago, and we had Musa Faki, we had all the whole guys in the conference, and it was clear what they stand, what they want to do. Uh, that even Security Council cannot do. Security Council cannot even express an opinion on what's going on in Sudan. It's shameful. You have access all over the continent. Do you... Have you talked to either of the generals that are causing this conflict in Sudan at the moment? Uh, no, I, 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 I don't have enough common ground even to start a conversation. I believe all those guys are criminals. They should end up in The Hague. Will they ever? I, I hope will so. They? I hope so. What's the, what's the chance of it? One, one day it will come. One day, look, Bashir ended up in prison and people said, oh, well, Bashir, is, nobody can touch him. He was in prison. 
But so what happened to African we'll courts? What happened to African courts pushing for African solutions and offering African accountability? I, what, what happened to that? I, I mean, not, apart from Guinea and Central African Republic, where, where are the other trials? I think it is important to support the ICC. I objected to the an attempt to replace the ICC with an African court. And I don't think that was the right decision, actually. And again, you look at the way that court was constituted, which it cannot, it cannot prosecute presidents. Yes, they gave themselves immunity from exactly. prosecution. Exactly. So I asked, I said, why you guys, you know, if this court end up really prosecuting taxi drivers and fishermen, but the normal courts can do that. Why you need a special court? It, it, it just, it's silly. It's just some president want to protect themselves from the ICC, and that was a maneuver to do it. <coughs> I, I'm sorry about that. So there are no quick fixes for this war in Sudan that's going on, and it will spread to the region. It's already spread to West, I, I, West Darfur, hasn't it? What about South Sudan? Is that next? Okay, it is a different situation in South Sudan. I'll come to it. But I think we cannot give up on Sudan. We have to deal with it quickly before the fire spreads. Who because deals the whole with reason, who, who can deal the with whole it? World, I mean, it's, it is very encouraging to see the United States is involved. Saudi Arabia is involved, both of them trying to shoot up. The African Union is involved, Egad is involved, the Quartet is involved. So our message to them, and most of those guys were, we had a big conference in Nairobi, our foundation, and all those guys were there. And the message to everybody is we need to speak with one voice now. All the voice, all the neighbor countries with one voice. And we need to ensure that we put this fire out. We need to ban any exports of arms to the, to the region over there. And we need to tell people, look, either you behave or we're going to go after you. You, t you talked earlier about foreign armies being in African countries. I think there are 13 foreign armies, actually, at the moment in various African countries. How healthy do you think it is for Africans to, to welcome in Russia's mercenary group? Of course. It's um, not. Wagner, for instance, notorious in Ukraine, and now expanding its footprint in, across the continent. Abs abs absolutely unacceptable. And you, Tim, notice who invited them? Military, well, military regimes? In a, in a number of Western countries, there's been consternation that some African countries have been ambivalent, or in the case of South Africa, neutral over Russia's invasion of Ukraine. Is this payback for the West, for the, for the wrongs of the colonial era? Is that why? No, 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 it's not the colonial era. Tim, let's be frank. The resolution, American resolution, called for the uh, 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 condemning the uh, violation of the sovereignty of another country. Of Ukraine. Of Ukraine. And many African people said, excuse me, what did America do in Iraq? Was that legal? Was that not breach of security, sovereignty of another country? So why don't they condemn both then? Exactly. But from U.S. to put this resolution forward was a little bit really unwise. I think Germany should have put this resolution because Germany objected to the invasion of Iraq. But it's wrong for U.S. to put this resolution because then, excuse me, you are a hypocrite. But is neutral really the side that yeah, Africa but, no, wants but, to be but, on? Can you see the point? Either there is either the international rules or no rules. You tell me. Are the rules only applies to Russia, not the US? Let's not be hypocrite. This is the problem. This is the problem. We need to look at the mirror sometimes and realize what we say and what we do. What happened in Libya? We went and broke this country. We never put it together again. Is that acceptable? What do you make? Look, I, I, let us be honest and dealing with this stuff. So it's not like the West is little white and all romantic. Nobody's and, saying that. Okay. Nobody's saying that. So don't lecture. Don't lecture other people and say, you, look, I condemn 
And I think it is a problem, it is unacceptable for Russia to invade Ukraine. And there's no question. But in the same breath, I'll condemn American invasion of, of Iraq because this is its equivalence. And we need to remember that. And I just hope that people, when they talk about international rules, they should apply to everybody. There's no exceptionalism. Mo Ibrahim, what do you make of uh, America's charge last week that South Africa had loaded arms onto a sanctioned Russian freighter? What do you make of that charge? I, I, I am really confused. Uh, if that was true, why the ambassador apologized? Well, we only have South Africa's version for saying he apologized. Uh, he did not apologize? He didn't apologize in public. Oh. I thought I wrote that in BBC website actually that he apologized. No, South Africa said he apologized to them, but but they they denied the charge. But when it when they did deny it, the wording was ambiguous. They said we didn't approve any arms to Russia; it wasn't sanctioned or approved by us. That suggests there was something that took place, uh, doesn't it? I, I, They're playing with words. I am afraid that. South Africa has a number of issues, I think. And uh, where is the ANC? Where is the government? Uh, I think ANC probably is losing its, its grip on power, effectively. And I read some, somewhere today that it's possible that Ramaphosa even not aware of what happened. They cannot admit that because they say, okay, this is terrible. If he's aware and he denied, it's also terrible. Are the American reports wrong? I don't know. Uh, American reports now are more accurate than before. Uh, I mean, during Iraq, it is the weapons of mass destruction, and which is became rubbish actually. But during the Korean War, the Americans have been very accurate in uh, reporting. So I really don't know them. I don't know what is the truth of what happened there. But I notice the deterioration of governance in South Africa and we speak public about this. All right, in the time we have left, we talked a lot about what African countries have or haven't done. What do you want the West, very briefly, what do you want the West to do for Africa? I think, I think the West need really to behave in a much better way. Look at what is happening here. COVID came and we had a big problem. All European leaders, 20 European leaders and African leaders signed a letter published in FT. Nobody's safe unless everybody is safe. Africa needs support. We need $100 million to put it. And then nothing happened. Good words but no deeds, nothing done. Then people hoard, hoarding COVID, nationalism, and let uh, say, guys, even our health service needs support, nothing, okay? Uh, that was really bad behavior, really bad, and stupid, because they, they are not safe unless everybody is safe, they know that. So but there's more the, engagement now from the West. Uh, let us see, but, uh, uh, no, but after... EU-Africa after, after, Africa summits, six EU-Africa summits. Uh, yeah, but what is EU-Africa summit was great, but let us see the deliverable. That's very important. Look at the Africa debt stress now. During COVID, $20 trillion out of thin air everywhere, in Germany, in America, in the US, in, 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 in Britain, out of thin air, $20 trillion. Africans could not raise any money, okay? And now they're in that stress. What is happening? When Ukraine has a problem, when Greece has a financial problem, the IMF and the World Bank immediately sort it out. Now what's happening in Zambia, what's happening in Sierra Leone, two years, did they act? No. And you want them they to clamp down, down, and you want them to clamp down also on the illicit Cash illicit financial flows. There are hundred billion dollars. hundred billion dollars a year. Plus, plus coming out of Africa. Africa. Who? Western companies. Landing up in Western banks. And, yes, mass pricing and profit. On, you know, 
uh, profit shifting. And they know that. And say, guys, why did you act? So we need really a better behavior from our friends in the West. Right. We need a better world order. We need a better financial institution because these financial institutions are not serving the South. They are dominated by Western, North, the Northern ideas, the boards, etc. There is no voice in the board of these institutions from the guys who are supposed to be the customer, the clients of, this, of these banks. Right. That's why these banks will, will focus on Greece, will focus in, in Ukraine. All right. But Sri Lanka, where is the board there doesn't know where, is, where is Zambia is. Mo Ibrahim, we're running out of time. Okay. Thank you very much indeed Thank for being you, on Tom. Conflict Zone. Good Thank to you, see Tom. you. Thank Cheers. you. Thank you.